So it's a stunning day here in the kitchen garden and the change in the weather gives me a great opportunity to fix one of our greenhouses. We had a storm come through last year that blew the door off and blew six panes out of the side and also damaged quite a few of the panes in the roof. So that is in desperate need of repair because we've got heated propagators in here with young seedlings in. The temperatures at the moment are quite chilly and the more protection they have the better. At the moment this is rather too ventilated. So this greenhouse is glazed with horticultural glass. Um, it's okay when it's okay but it's very fragile and when it breaks it breaks into some rather nasty pieces. Um, here's one piece that came down from one of the the panes in the roof and and as you can see this is this is very sharp and nasty nasty thing um, we've we've had we've had greenhouses with horticultural glass for for many years um, here and at, at previous places and we've never had any problem with them um, when we got the the two large greenhouses we had those with toughen glass and to be quite honest, I would not buy a greenhouse with horticultural glass now. Um, the toughen glass is just so much safer, even though we haven't had any incidents with it. The potential is always there for, for a nasty accident. Last year, we were, my wife and I, we were manoeuvring something in, in one of those larger greenhouses and... Um, I obviously wasn't paying attention to where the other end was and we broke one of the roof panes. I turned round just in time to see the entire lot fall down on Christina's head. Um, it looked just like somebody had emptied a bucket of water on her because uh, that, that glass shatters into thousands of tiny pieces. Now because they're very small they, they have very little mass and although they can have sharp edges to them, they don't tend to cause much injury, or it's certainly a, a lot safer than the horticultural glass. So she got away with just a couple of scratches. Um, the thought of that happening with horticultural glass above her head, that doesn't bear thinking about. That could have been a very nasty accident indeed. So, I've decided whilst repairing this one to get all of the horticultural glass off of the roof. That will at least make this greenhouse a little bit safer. We'll still have it in the sides and, and as I've said I've, I've never had any incidents with, um, with the glazing before. Now I think there are probably enough intact pieces in the roof to um, fill the hole we've got in the side. I need six panes there but but I think the the roofing panes are two different sizes and only one of those is correct so I'll have to see when I've got it down but I'm, I'm hoping I'll be able to fill in the the side with the uh, glass from the roof. That leaves the door and the roof and to fix those I've got some polycarbonate so you can get polycarbonate in all sorts of different thicknesses. Um, the material I'm talking about is called twin wall polycarbonate because it's basically two sheets with ribs between them. So you get some reasonable insulation with that material. Um, I've got four millimeter polycarbonate and that's um, sort of a direct replacement for the glazing we've got here. Um, you, can, you can use 10 millimeter or, or other, other thicknesses and they have their benefits too. If I were to buy a greenhouse now, I would certainly look at toughened glass rather than horticultural. I'm not a huge fan of the plastic, to be honest. Um, and one of the one of the benefits of a greenhouse is that the the light transmission is very good through glass, and it's not so good through plastic. But on the other hand, the plastic produces a more diffuse light and I think that can be rather beneficial. I always liked the property of the light in the polytunnel when we had it. Um, 
that seem to be quite handy, especially for young plants. They seem to enjoy that slightly more diffuse light. So it's it's not it's not clear cut um, that one is better than the other. Um, there are there are pros and cons with with each option. The one thing I wouldn't do now is use horticultural glass unless I really had to. Of course, it's it's very much cheaper than toughened glass. And I did think about buying toughened glass to replace the glazing here, but it is it really is quite expensive um partly because it's very difficult to cut it's very easy to cut this sort of glass you only need to score it and 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 snap it but um yeah toughened glass is is tricky to work so that puts the cost up the polycarbonate on the other hand is much more economical so i got 10 sheets of that for around about 50 pounds you do need a few other bits and bobs, some tapes to seal the edges, and I'll talk more about that when I come to fit the first sheet. The first job, though, is to get the old glazing out of the roof as carefully as I can. I will glove up for that because that can still have some rather sharp edges to it. Those old clips are a little bit tight, so I'm going to use a pair of pliers to help take them out. Well, I'm quite pleased with that. So far, so good. I've got all the panes down without breaking any more, and it looks like I've got plenty of the right size to finish reglazing the side of the greenhouse. Um, the annoying bit was the windows. Uh, I think I have to take them apart in order to take the glazing out. I'll have a look at those later. But they actually slide down through the uh, aluminium extrusion on the on the ridge, so. They're a bit of a fiddle to get in and out, but well, it's all down now. There's so much moss on the on the windows that uh, made it a little bit tricky to get them out, but I've never disturbed the moss. I really love it, and it's a shame I'm going to have to brush all of that out to fit the, the, the new glazing, but it'll come back in a few years' time. Well, the wind is picking up a little bit here now, and that's not ideal because this stuff is rather light and will be blown about. But since I've already got the glazing off the roof, I've got to finish this job. So I'm just going to measure out what I need. These are not, these are not the right size for these windows.
So I'm just going to use this um, square to provide a nice straight edge to cut against. Right. And my top tip is um, if you have some clamps, to just clamp this in place. Not too tight, you don't want to crush the material, but just enough to uh, stop the straight edge from slipping. It's so easy when um, cutting something like this, which needs a little bit of force with a straight edge for the, for the edge to move when you're cutting and uh, for that to ruin your cut or, or even worse, to, to slip with the knife and uh, injure yourself. So if you have a couple of clamps, they're really useful just to clamp this in place, making this a safe and easy job. And there we go, a very neat cut. So one thing to bear in mind with polycarbonate is that one side will be treated to protect it from UV. Now ordinarily this material will tend to go cloudy or, or milky with age and that protection um, should, should reduce that or, or prevent it. So it's very important that you don't lose track of which side is which. On this sheet I've got a clear film protecting it on one side and I've got this film with the with the writing on this side and this is the side that has the UV protection. So I'm just going to remove that film but when I've done that I'm just going to put a small mark in the corner on this side so that I don't forget which side I have to put uppermost when I fit them. Now I could install this sheet just as it is, but the hollow channels in it would tend to get filled over time with debris, dust, insects and, and, and other stuff and um, that's not really what we want. So it's a good idea to seal them before installing them. So for that purpose I've got this um, very thin aluminium tape and I'm going to use that on the edge that will be installed at the top. On the bottom edge I have this blue breathable tape and this will still stop dust and insects and the like from getting in but it will also let moisture come out so that this doesn't become filled with condensation. So all I'm going to do is just tape these ends. So this, this um, breather tape only has two bands of adhesive, there's none in the middle so that it can let that air out.
Right, so this sheet is now ready to install and I've got my mark somewhere. Yep, telling me which way up. So I'll just prepare the other nine sheets and then I'll get to fitting them. So all of the sheets are now cut and the ends have been taped. It's a fiddly job and it's not the neatest work in the world either. They do look a wee bit ugly as well, I must confess. I'm really not sure what I think about this material. It's probably a reasonable solution for this greenhouse, certainly at the moment. And I don't want to put horticultural glass back in there. But um, I'll just have to see how it does over the, over the coming year. Well, the sun has long since dipped below our hedgerow and it won't be long before it's dark. The temperature's dropping and tomorrow we have rain, so I've got to get these on the roof right now. The old clips were galvanised and some of them were in a bad way, but I've got some new, new clips and these are, are stainless, so they should be much better. So the first job is to clean out the, the moss and, and rubbish from the the glazing bars and then I can put the new panes up. Now I was planning to uh, glaze the door with polycarbonate but I don't actually have enough to do these two sections. I've put a small piece in the middle but for now this is going to have to be done with glass. So that job's done now and just in the nick of time 
in about five or ten minutes it's going to be proper dark out here. I hope the glazing does stay in place um, but we'll have to reserve judgment until the first storm blows through. In any event I'm going to clear up my tools while I can still see where they are and head indoors for a nice hot cup of tea. So I wasn't that happy with how these panels uh, fitted on the greenhouse. They are so flexible that I was very worried that a strong gust of wind, if it got into the greenhouse through the open door or, or the vents, would cause these panels to bend enough to pop out of the clips. Possibly also a strong wind blowing on the panels themselves might cause them to belly inwards and similarly pop the clips. Now those glazing clips work very well for glass, but the glass is rigid. This stuff is so flexible, it, it's so easy just to, to push it out. So the next day I made one small modification, then I came back yesterday and, and, and did some more extensive work. So the, the first thing was to secure this bottom edge of the panel. So this panel just rests on this ledge that's part of the aluminium extrusion. So there's nothing to, to hold this in place except the glazing clips on each side. So all I did here is in the middle, I drilled a, a small hole and inserted a flange self-tapping screw. And that just stops this panel from popping up here. Well, I was a lot happier having done that, but the next day I decided that probably wasn't sufficient. And I have read um, posts where people are talking about bonding the, the panels down um, with silicon or, or some other sort of adhesive. Um, that would require me to, to clean up this frame quite considerably and, and it certainly wants to be dry when, when doing that. So that's not ideal and also it makes it very difficult to, to take one out if you, if you ever need to. Um, what I decided to do instead is put an additional fixing more or less in the centre of the panel and the idea is, is, is just to stop this flexing because if the panel's not flexing, then the clips on the side will do their job and hold it in place. So it's captured at the top um, underneath part of the extrusion. There's quite a gap there, but even so, this panel can't, can't bend up too much there before it hits the top of that channel. So what I've done here is insert a bolt and a penny washer to uh, hold the panel down to some cross members that I fixed inside and the panel now can't go anywhere. It's, uh, it's a lot more rigid and I think now this is probably fit for a decent storm. So I raided the shed for odd bits of scrap metal and I've used some of this um, mild steel strapping. It's fixed at, at either end with um, cropped head bolts and then in the middle we've got the bolt that's coming through holding the plastic in place and this is now much more rigid and even if one or two of the clips happen to get popped out um, the panel itself can't go anywhere because this bolt will hold it in place. In other places I've used off cuts of aluminium angle and that works just as well. Um, any, any material really just to put just to put something across the the center of the panel that you can fix a bolt to. So a piece of wooden batten ought to do fine. So with the extra fixings in place, I'm now a lot happier. We'll have to see how it does when the first storm hits it, but I'm pretty confident that these panels aren't going anywhere. So that is pretty much it for this um, greenhouse renovation. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.